you know, right? Well, if you think about this, you mentioned like this is something that their team should know about and you should continually drill it. And I think the thing that should be said is we want to serve our clients before, during, and after in every possible interaction. Because if you think about it, if they're not served before, the technician shows up less than a 10 out of 10. Because they are thinking of the company as a whole, not the individual components of it. Mm. So if your office didn't give them the best service at the beginning, there's marks off the technician. So instead of showing up as a 10 out of 10, the technician shows up as a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Now they've got to build 10 out of 10 value. So they actually have to build more value just to get to an even playing field. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. It's another fantastic Friday, Joe. I am pumped to be here. Just a couple mm -hmm. of master electricians with business addictions coming here to help you five days a week, master your sales, simplify your pricing and deliver premium level electrical service on the Electricpreneur Secrets podcast. I am so pumped. And there's something that keeps happening, Joe, I need to share with you just quick. By all means, go ahead. You know how sometimes we say there's going to be a test. We're going to ask you what I say on every episode. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like I'm failing that test. But recently there's been an answer on that test that makes me laugh every time. Oh, please tell me. What is it? I ask them, do you know what I say? Do you remember what I say at, at the beginning of every episode? And they go, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You got to kidding me. That's the thing that sticks? That's what's, yeah, that's what I, sticks. That's so what I guess there. that's cool. the thing. That's the first thing you hear when you listen. And so it's really echoing. I'm hoping people aren't hearing that when they wake up first thing in the morning, but hey, I can't control that. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Got it. No problem. Let's rock and roll. Oh, man. And as the weekend's coming up, I mean, we've kind of covered this TGIF problem before. I, I try mm -hmm. to appreciate every day, but we were just mm -hmm. talking about some stuff behind the scenes that I felt warranted being talked about live as well. Yeah. And that's your um, pure enjoyment of the backcountry, right? Yes. Yeah. I was going to say surprising that some people you know, didn't know that about me, but I really, really, really like just being dropped off in the woods. Mm. Like it's a weird thing, but like, um, I grew up in a little bit more rural. It's like, wasn't rural, but at the time it wasn't developed. So there was all this like, like private reserve property and state land. And as a kid, I would just go, I would just literally just go out into the woods until my parents would eventually call. <laughs> but like different world now, right? But different yeah, world. Yeah. yeah it's, I, you know, I grew up in the nineties. Like, what are you going to do? But like, I love it. I love it. And I can't wait to come up to Canada and just be just out there with you, man. It's going to be great. Oh, man. We got some stuff that'll blow your top off. I'm the same way as you can imagine. There's Canadians who aren't. I don't really understand it, but there's a lot of people who do not get this whole thing that we're like a massive landmass with a pretty small population. Mm -hmm. Really. I think every Canadian's got something like uh, well, we measure in kilometers here, but probably something like two square miles per person in this country. It's crazy. Sounds like a solid deal. I mean, I would love to not be around as many people. So like if there was a way that we could have more land and less people with it, oh, like that's the dream. Because I can imagine it's quiet. It's serene. It's not trashed. You know, people take care of the property. That's nothing's worse than going to beautiful land and seeing like a nice scenic waterfall and like going deep into the woods and then find like an old car. You're like, mm. come on, who, who did this? Well, if we had a country with just electricians in it, it would probably have a pretty low GDP because of these price objections. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're setting me up on this one. All right, right. Beat down. Well, no, I do want to say, man, I love the bad country. And quite honestly, as business owners, we tend to neglect those needs, but I consider it a need. In fact, the other day I even had an epiphany that was like, it might be time to go to the ocean again. It's just been a, it's been a minute. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's something soothing about just the endless tide and the mm -hmm. horizon out there. You ever feel that way? Actually, yeah. I have a very specific view about the ocean. If you don't mind me touching on it quick. <laughs> um, the ocean is healing. The ocean is constant. The ocean is stable. I go to the ocean to center. Mm. Um, I love doing yoga on the beach. I love waking up and doing morning meditations and doing prayer at the beach and like really just acknowledging what's there and it's a beautiful thing, but also the salt water itself is very healing for the body. So like I, 
I love going and just submersing in the water, just sitting there and knowing that any kind of ailments I have, like cuts and bruises and scrapes are going to get healed up and antibacterial features as well. It's really cool. It's just the ocean's an amazing thing. Absolutely, man. Couldn't agree more. And I love the river and stream fishing. That's my that's my jam right there. But it's mm-hmm. been years since I've really gone and done it. So tisk tisk, I got to shape up and get that going. We were talking a bit about that. Would it be wrong of us to share that with all of our viewers and listeners to maybe encourage them to go and do a bit of the same? By all means. I mean, hey, if we get more people in the bush, I can't see that being a problem. I mean, right now, I'm just happy because I can see now. So I'm just happy, man. Oh, the yeah, the new glasses well. looking fresh, brother, looking fresh. Thank you. And just, you're not crying. I know, right? It's like one of those crazy things where people are like, why are you tearing up? It's like, I, I swear to God, I'm, I'm not being emotional. Well, I am emotional. But it's that literally the way my eyes are set up. If I stare at a screen too long, my eyes water. But now I've got like these super glasses that'll filter everything out and can actually see the way I need to see. So it's great. Well, brother, I got to let you know, Gary Fan is with us live in the Entrepreneur Secrets Group. He says we should stop bragging about Canada and how beautiful it is. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and do that and move on to the topic. A little more price objection beat down today, Joe. I sure. think it's important to finish the week pretty strong because we've talked pretty deep on a lot of the pieces, but we haven't really been able to bring it all together. Like the value piece that we started putting out there on Wednesday, guys. Today's mm-hmm. your final call. If you want to grab that, find us on our, our website, serviceloopelectrical.com. You can reach us there or on our Facebook groups, the best place to grab that. It may even be emailed to our our, uh, fan club on the emails. So if that's something you guys want to be a part of, absolutely reach out. We want to help you with this, all of that and more, and continue to do this week after week. So get in touch. We're here to serve you and, again, help you master sales, simplify pricing, and deliver premium level electrical service. Joe, can we just role play this and, and then break it up? Sure, good. All right, man. Listen, Joe, I appreciate that you have all the options and everything you've done here, but I just called for this ceiling fan. It do- it's not working. There's something wrong with the switch. And I just am having troubles understanding why that is going to cost me at the lowest option you've presented, uh, $350. I completely understand where you're coming from, Clay. And the first thing I just want to address is that if I've given you the impression that you're just paying for that particular device, then I've let you down because a hundred percent of what you're paying for is our service. And that service comes before, during, and after every time we serve you. Can I explain a little more of what that actually means? Or would you like to know, or would you like to know why so many other customers still choose to use us, even if we're more of an investment? Yeah, please do. Okay. So let's talk about the first time that you ever gave us a call. When you called us, what was that experience like talking to the office? It was pleasant. It was good. They were nice. Awesome. Well, let's talk about the reason why. What we do is rather than hire some high school kid or someone who doesn't have a ton of customer service experience or even get an automated robot service, we have a trained professional behind the phone who knows how to connect you with the proper schedule and with the right technician. We have open and later hours to where we can make sure that you're not waiting on standby or constantly on hold. Now, obviously it would cost less if we didn't provide you that service. First off, is it wrong for us to want to provide you a better level experience? Well, no. I mean, the other companies I called didn't call back or didn't answer or or put me on hold and and infinitely. So it was helpful to be able to get to talk to someone. I get that. So that's the first thing. Obviously, you know, you're getting a better front end experience from beginning to end. The second thing then is the during. We came here and we didn't just focus on the one thing you called us for. We focused on the entire system infrastructurally as a whole. Because if you think about it, you want your fan installed, right? But if I were to connect to something that had a safety concern down the line, would it be wrong of me to at least want to tell you about it? No. And, you know, ultimately, I don't want to have to have you back or or have the same problem again. Correct. So what we did when we were here was we looked at everything as a whole, not only what you asked for, but what directly connects to it. That way, when we actually give you a price, we can stand behind it and guarantee it. But even more so, we didn't just give you a price. We sat down and engineered a complete range of options from the finest money can buy to the most bare bones you can possibly have. We did this so you can have more control and better 
you know, better availability on what you have. Was it wrong of me to want to give you that kind of control? No, no. Like I said, we did did appreciate the options. Again, okay. it was just the, the bottom price that was shocking to us and, and definitely more than we anticipated. And I hear you. The thing is, is it goes even beyond that. While we're working together, it's not just what we're doing now. We also serve you after we've worked together, meaning after we've installed the ceiling fan for you and we put everything in the way you want, if there was ever a problem, would you want to have to pay again for us to come back out? No, definitely not. Not with work not, that you right? provided. Yeah. So the thing is, we actually go and offer a lifetime craftsmanship guarantee, meaning that what we're going to do is I am so confident in the workmanship that we're going to put in that you'll never have to call me back. And if there was ever an opportunity that I had to, we would 100% cover what the thing was. That's because we are known to be trained at the highest level. And that's the exact level we want to serve you at. So realistically, what you're paying for isn't just that. You're paying for the experience before, during, and after because we refuse to cut corners on quality, reliability, and customer service. So to sum all this up, what I'm trying to ask is this. Because we wanted to offer you this level of service, we felt that you deserved it. Because we felt you deserved it, there has to be a certain price point to deliver that service. And that makes us more of an investment than someone who's willing to cut those corners. Was it wrong for us to not be willing to cut those corners? No, no, I, I get what you're trying to do here, Joe. Okay, so how would you like to proceed? Well, you're here, and um, maybe I'll take the the I guess. I'll choose you. Mm, okay, you're going to try and say I guess. Well, Clay, I really appreciate you saying that, and trust me, I am honored to work with you, but I do have one concern with this, and that is you said, I guess I'll work with you. I don't want to have a relationship with someone who's not fully committed to having a relationship with me. And what that means is this, is that if you feel like you can only guess about working with us, then we probably shouldn't be working together because I only want to work with someone who's hundred percent satisfied with what we're doing. So let's figure this out. Either a, can we discuss what it's going to take to make you hundred percent satisfied or can we discuss on how we should part as friends? No, you were actually right, Joe. I, I was using loose language, but, but I do want to use you. Okay. Now, if you don't mind me asking, why are you so insistent on using us? I mean, when we first started talking, you were telling us that you were worried about the price. What's changed since then? Well, I definitely, since you explained it, I do feel like I'm going to get everything we need here and without mm -hmm. any problems. And that's pretty important to me because I'm a busy person. And you know what? We want to design options to make sure we respect that time as well. So which one of these choices did you want to do? The, just the basic. Let's stay small. Okay. That's Appreciate a great choice. It. It's a great choice. I'm happy to help you with that. Let's see what we can do to get this taken care of for you. Okay. All right. So out of character, I know we did a, we did a curveball there. Yeah. You that just literally jumped right Wednesday. into it. <laughs> Wednesday, I was trying to be an asshole, but today I really wanted to hit the, I guess as well. Can we just talk about that and break out the, I guess first, we'll start at yeah. the end and, and why that was so important for you not to just take at mm -hmm. that point and do the exchange. Okay. The reason why I guess is so dangerous is because what if you really look at the words and you understand, it's not just what your client is telling you, it's what are they really saying? When someone says, I guess I have to do this, they don't say that from a volition point. Like that's not like a, oh, I am so excited to work with you. It's like a, if I guess I have to work with you. Mm. Now, if someone feels like they're compelled to the point where they have to, like they don't have another choice but they're not comfortable. They don't really want to, but this is the choice. They'll say something like, I guess. But that same person, if given the opportunity to cancel with you to go with someone else that they do like, will do so. So the I guess is an indicator that they're truly not convinced and that you don't really have the sale, even if they're swiping their card. So I used it more as a way of saying, that's a, that's a flag here. Like there's a problem that they're trying to communicate even if they don't realize they're communicating it. So what I like to do is back it up and say, well, hold on for a second. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You had said, I guess I'll work with you. I don't want to work with someone unless they're fully committed to working with us. You know, and you can even go, depending on how they say it, you can be like, can you explain a little bit more of what your hesitation might be? Because I don't want to take your money and make you feel like you're just making an unequal exchange. Like I want you to be happy with what we're doing. Otherwise we probably shouldn't do it. The benefit of that is it's actually a pull. 
you're telling the customer that I want to work with you, but I'm not going to, if you're not fully satisfied. Yeah. Either a, they'll change their tone and be like, no, 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 no. I'm happy. I want this. I was just, I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Or they'll specify what's going on. Well, you know, Joe, I want to work with you, but it's still a lot more than I thought it was going to be like $400 for a fan. Like I just, I didn't think it was going to be that the fan was 200 bucks. I was told double that it should be, you know, okay. I thought it was $400 in total. I don't have $600 for this. I'm like, okay, well let's come up with a more economical option because if I do this for you and you're not happy before it's even installed, what are the odds you'll be happy when it's done? What are the odds you'll be happy when you're handing me the check at the end? Is it wrong for me to want to prioritize your happiness in this? Yeah. That's the real angle to go for. And yeah. I think your customer would see it as well. It became a commitment. Mm -hmm. It was a half-assed commitment and you forced it back into, I shouldn't say forced, but you you didn't Position. settle for a half-assed commitment. You, you sat there in the ridiculous, as we've said so many times, mm -hmm. to make sure this went to the place that they were making a decision and you weren't forcing their hand in any way, shape or form. And that they still have the options. The power here though, still kind of ties to that value driver equation. And, and this originally came from uh, essentially Alex Hormozzi's book, a uh, hundred mm -hmm. million dollar offers, but I love this equation and it's something that we reference often is on the bottom side of this equation are two things that we're trying to reduce at all times. And that's time delay and effort and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So while I can even appreciate that, absolutely, your your basic option is often much bigger than they were imagining, especially on a demand call call out. Yeah, very right? rarely is someone saying like, "Yeah, you have one GFI that's tripped in my bathroom that just you know it's just weird. It just doesn't want to reset." They're not expecting a six hundred dollar bill. Like, there's no way they were expecting that. But at the same time, when you communicate why it is what it is, as well as what they're really going to receive from it, that's mm. great. But we can't settle. Like, you're right. We have to stretch it to the ridiculous and be like, this is what you want. I want to help you get there. But I don't want to take your money if you feel like this is an unequal exchange right now. Absolutely. And we haven't really said it enough this week, but also like STYO, stick to your offer. You mm -hmm. can't settle either. Discounting mm -hmm. this call is not appropriate. That's not a solution that's long-term and sustainable. And that's why this week has been maybe one of the most important weeks we've ever done on this podcast to really try to help electricians with this. Because if that's the common case on a demand call and you're priced right and your offer's set up right, then you're going to be more expensive than they think. And that means likely you're going to face this very objection 10 plus times a week. And if your team's larger, maybe two, three, four times that. So shouldn't we have this on, on, on autopilot, on speed dial, dialed mm -hmm. in? Shouldn't we be saying this to ourselves every day in the van on the way to the customer's house, reviewing the offer, knowing it, uh, checking your team on it, just throwing mm -hmm. out objections to your team at random several times a week to make sure that not just the sales team gets it, but even the office administration gets it. So that when someone calls and has a price objection, even on the phone, you can start to, as a team, be mm -hmm. unified in your solution or your articulation of that value. I love that. And I, we think we can even stretch it even further. Let's. Because this is one of the ridiculous. I know, right? Well, if you think about this, you mentioned like this is something that their team should know about. You should continually drill it. And I think the thing that should be said is, we want to serve our clients before, during, and after in every possible interaction. Because if you think about it, if they're not served before, the technician shows up less than a 10 out of 10. Because they are thinking of the company as a whole, not the individual components of it. Mm. So if your office didn't give them the best service at the beginning, there's marks off the technician. So instead of showing up as a 10 out of 10, the technician shows up as a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Now they've got to build 10 out of 10 value. So they actually have to build more value just to get to an even playing field compared to if the office had delivered that amazing experience, they might have been boosted up from what they thought the company would have been versus lowering it. 
And then 100%. later down the line, once the technician delivers his value, we need the installers to also be just as communicative because no one wants the sales guy to come up and then be like, Hey, I got the sale. You never see me again. The installer should continue that same relationship. And that's what completes the cycle is yeah. where the salesperson then comes back and reviews it. And is, I'm so happy. There's a lifetime warranty. Those things are just essential to taking it to that ridiculous level. Yeah. That's on point for sure, man. And, and each of those kind of average out your overall score of the customer experience. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, I'm reminded of, and I want to bring forward again, like people do do business with people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. I agree and with so you. if, if on that journey, they encounter three different people in this operation and that experience and person one and three, they don't actually have any rapport or trust with that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's All where price three need happen. to hit it off. All three need to be in sync, congruent with your offer, right? And if you guys, mm -hmm. again, if you don't have the value piece, you got to grab this thing, that value offer, price objection beat down. We started giving it away Wednesday. We're finishing giving it away today, but that's going to help you understand. We're giving you away um, our SOP for objection handling level one, how to really differentiate the objection from a reaction because mm. there's some differences there that are pointed out, right? Very much so. Very, very much so. How to build an irresistible offer that you and your team can get behind in every case. And finally, how to articulate this just like Joe just did so that it's not so much word for word. I'm just going to memorize this line and say it and orchestrate another slimy deal where someone yeah. felt tricked into paying our price, but where you and your team actually believe in what you're doing and have annihilated this, obliterated this objection once and for all. I mean, uh, you can't do better than that. That sounds like a straight up golden platter right there. All right, brother. We're actually out of time already, if you can believe that. Oh, wow. Cool. We got to come up with a couple action items and actually okay. uh, try to finish this week strong. Big Friday. I'm wishing everyone an awesome uh, afternoon and an awesome weekend. But what do you think for a couple of action items on this one, Joe? I'd be happy to take them if you're willing. Let's do it, man. Okay. So we've gone through a lot of different ways. We've gone through a lot of different objection handle techniques this week. I want to try and give you something that we haven't before. So the most basic that I can possibly suggest is, do you know which objections are stumping you, right? The very bare minimum is I know that when I get this objection, I fold. Or when I get this objection, I feel like a balloon that's been deflated. I'm like, oh, they just want me to email it over. Oh, they want to talk to their spouse, uh, whatever it is. You have to know what that list is. So the bare, barest minimum is can you at least produce a list that if you had a coach or a trainer like ourselves, you could say, this is what's stumping me. That's level one. Mm -hmm. Now, level two is not only just understanding what objection, but why and how it makes you feel. Now, the reason why I want to ask the feel into it is, Clay, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. If I were to come to you and say that we were expensive, right? Like you, you and I run electricity, we're, we're both running an electrical company. Yep. And we had it set up where one, I'm your technician and I tell you that we're expensive. Mm -hmm. What does that say about me? As the, what does that show about my beliefs? That you don't believe in the value we provide or understand mm -hmm. the pricing um, structure and why we're priced that way. Correct. The offer. The third thing could be because people are telling me that we're expensive. Yes. Yes. All right. You nailed it. Yeah. Perspective so the, shift. Yeah. So now we're going into this and saying, well, why do I feel like I can't handle this objection? The times that we feel we can't handle an objection is usually when we actually believe the objection is truth. Mm -hmm. If you believe your client, you're not going to argue with them because you're both on the same page. But if you don't believe your client, it's almost intrinsic that you'd be like, wait a second, let's time out here. Wait, hold on. Did I give you the impression you were paying for parts? Like, did I, wait a second. I must have dropped the ball here. Because you see how that just comes naturally out? Like, because I believe that I'm not charging you for parts. Yeah. I believe that even if I was $500 an hour, I'm going to find a way to make it valuable at that level. 
Mm-hmm. I believe in what we're doing. So the objections is this, or the assignment is this. Bare minimum, what objections are you facing? Apex level, what are you feeling when the client tells you this? And let's try to explore why are you feeling it? Nice. And that's going to lead you to some big root cause shit there, man. And mm-hmm. that's going to help massive. So I can't blame you for for dropping those ones. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And of course, grabbing that value piece is going to help you guys even further. And with that last piece you mentioned on that perspective shift is absolutely critical. We can't start to believe this stuff, guys. But here's what I do believe. I believe each and every one of you are going to have a fantastic weekend and come back even stronger next week than you were this week. Joe, absolutely. Thank you again, man. And let's have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Truly my pleasure. I can't wait to see you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Cheers.